A Chadburn, North Carolina police officer was fired on Tuesday for a controversial Facebook post. The officer in question is Ricky Souls, and they offered, uh, they told him that he could resign if he wanted to, and he refused. Then they had to fire him. We're going to take a look at the Facebook post right now. Now, it's a very long one, and there's a lot of opinion infused into it. I'm just going to read the highlights here. He says, you are not victims anymore. You are the bad guys now. You have your handout for more freebies. You won't take responsibility for yourself. You have a 74% illegitimacy rate. You are 13% of the population, but you commit 65% of the crime. You produce nothing. You contribute nothing. You take and just want more. Now, um, I wanted to ask you guys uh, what you think about this post. Obviously, it's, it, it's fueled by a lot of racist rhetoric, but do you think it was developed, this resentment was developed uh, on the force, or do you think this was a pre-existing condition? And also, do you think that this affects his duties? Well, first, let's note for, uh, that duties is a funny word. Secondly, <laughs> Good. Uh, let's note that if it is a pre-existing condition, luckily Obamacare will cover it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, I don't think that he got this racist uh, uh, on the police force, I, I, you know, I'm not obviously, obviously, I'm not on that force. I have no idea, right? So it's speculation, but I, I'd be surprised. I think that this guy, it's so uh, ingrained in him that that uh, he seems to believe this stuff so thoroughly. And by the way, uh, his own police force fired him, so they're like, no, no, you can't uh, be a police here and treat people so disparately. If you have this opinion of some of the people that you're supposed to be protecting and serving, mm -hmm. uh, that's it's not going to work here. So give them credit for doing the right thing. But my favorite part of the story, Haas and Francis, is that uh, they came out later and said, no, no, he didn't, he didn't mean black people, and his wife's trying to defend him. He said, <laughs> no, no, he meant you know criminals, criminals yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, well, hmm, they you have fifteen percent of the population. Are exactly, yeah, you have seventy-four percent illegitimacy rate. Really, there was a study done on the illegitimacy rate of criminals. <laughs> you are thirteen percent of the population. Wait, yeah. no, that's the same percentage as African Americans. Yeah, exactly. Well, what a wonderful but if it was it criminals. Is. Wouldn't it be a hundred percent of the population? Yeah. Technically, if you're and talking no, about the criminal population. That's right, because yeah. he says you're thirteen percent of the population. But you commit 65 percent of the crime. No, no criminals commit 100 percent of the crime. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that uh, doesn't really work. He did say that these were not his own words. I love that when when people get put in this position and they're just like scrambling because they realize, oh my god, oh shit, I'm I am a racist. I just got exposed. So then he was saying that these were not his words. Mm -hmm. However, uh, that he uh, these were written by a sheriff in Milwaukee, and he just copied and pasted it. No, but like it's, it's not even a retweet. Like we rip on Donald Trump when he retweets like racist shit. This in this case, he literally copied, liked it, copied it, pasted it, and mm. then published it. Well, yeah. But Francis, I do want to ask you All this right. question. Hit me. Um, do you think it's appropriate to fire people for their uh, private Facebook correspondence, their Facebook uh, uh, posts? When you're a police officer, <laughs> absolutely. When it comes to something like this, right? Obviously, because we're in such a a time at the moment where this something like this can't stand, right? And I mean, I'm shocked he's from North Carolina. <laughs> really shot. Yeah, uh, right, but th this pisses me off on so many levels. Why? Because um, it it's his generalizations, right? It's these general misconceptions that plague society today that make things like Black Lives Matter so hard to get across, right? Because these generalities, people believe their facts, right? And they'll get, they'll find some fact out there because one of their friends has probably told them about it in a bar and they think that that's actually true. So he'll hit out with things like, oh, 13% of them. Uh, African Americans make up 13% 30, uh, of the population. Well, that is a true fact. No, but that is a true <laughs> fact, right? But then they'll skew those facts in order to, to play into their bias. When this is the exact same thing that I just recently, it recently pissed me off on Facebook. There was a video that went around, I don't know if you've seen it, um, 36 million views or something like that. It was a YouTuber who did the All Lives oh. Matter versus Black Lives Matter oh. video experiment, right? Where he took an All Lives Matter sign to a black neighborhood um, and he was. I don't condone any sort of violence. Don't mention his name. They either. basically no, I won't. But they basically uh, were a little aggressive towards him um, because they took that sign there, right? But then backing up his post on his Facebook, he was like, "Just stating a fact, uh, I'm more likely to be shot by police officers, and I'm a white guy." And at the bottom, fact or something like that. And twenty-four thousand people liked it. Twenty-four thousand people took that. That's that 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 amount of characters you could fit into a tweet is all the justification they needed to kind of display. Uh, Black Lives Matter, when the reality is, when you look into the facts, and this is more than facts, by the way, this is not just looking at facts and swaying it one way or another, it's, there's 160 million more white people in this country than there are black people, right? And then when you look out of it, as the Washington Post continuously are, are putting out there these facts that you really need to look into, 
Um, around, they account for 24% of those fatally shot and killed by the police, despite being 13% of the population. Yeah. That is the amount of black people that are killed out there. So disproportionately, yes, they are being targeted two and a half more times likely to be shot and killed by police officers. That's what they're protesting. Uh, that I, is what I believe it's, it's also five times more likely if you're uh, unarmed. Yeah, of uh, course. That's black, when, you're yeah, when you go. To, to be shot. Yeah, thirteen uh, percent of black people who have been fatally shot by police were unarmed, compared to seven percent of all white now, people. But these facts fall on deaf ears, Huss. This is the thing: it's the generalities are all they want to hear. Because why? Because the guy that they are putting their vote and their their pledge and their allegiance to, he speaks in generalities. Yeah, well, he speaks based on the guy that he met down the street. Ah, my mate down the street. He knows this Chinese guy, and he told <laughs> them that they're all out to get us. So that's all the facts I need. To I, back up my I point. did hear something about Chinese people uh, recently in um, restaurants where apparently they all spit in your food. This was like a, another racist adage where, and then when they come up to you and ask you, oh, how do you like your food? It's because they are asking you how their spit tastes. Now, this is an example of something that's racist. And I would, but I do want to end this on a positive note, okay? Look, the fact that um, or maybe it's not positive. We'll, we'll figure that out together. So the fact that this police officer is, um, you know, dishonorably discharged from the force is a good thing. That's the way I think about it, because obviously being racist is going to interfere with his police work, and we are seeing examples of this on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm glad that this person is off the force so that um, he doesn't perceive a situation where there's no threat to be a threatening situ a life threatening situation and then ends up shooting and killing someone mm -hmm. maybe even an unarmed person so that's exciting but then you also do see on the other hand like police officers being put on paid leave when they do end up actually murdering someone mm -hmm. so it's an interesting situation but i think it's it's a little we're we're seeing progress and it's all thanks to thanks to movements like black lives matters um yep do you guys have any other final yeah, thoughts yeah yeah so uh you know francis quotes uh facts out of the Washington Post and they take it from things like the FBI database those mm -hmm. are and then the other guys have Facebook memes <laughs> those are not equivalent so when he says 13 uh, percent of the population were committed 65 percent of the crime that's not true oh that's totally made up the Chinese story is not true they're just Facebook memes no th things called from data from the FBI from other organizations that's real as opposed to this nonsense and the 65 percent also like one of the things I um, I'm so upset by all the time is when they incorporate criminal offenses with like minor they equate uh, violent criminal offenses to minor um, criminal offenses like drug possession mm -hmm. when it's yes it's illegal at the federal level however it's legal in certain states and then of course we already know that the black people are being disproportionately targeted and then also more likely to go to jail for a minor non-violent criminal offense like drug possession, like marijuana possession, yeah. so that that beefs up that number and allows racist assholes like this guy to just put that out there as if it's a matter of fact without any sort of context, any sort of background information, and then infuse his ridiculous opinions like, you produce nothing, you contribute nothing. It's like, that's not a factual statement. That's, that's, your, that's not even anecdotal evidence, it's just your opinion. Yeah, in the words of Big Lebowski. Exactly. So when you're looking through all these characteristics that he's putting here, like how many case studies do you think he went through to validate any of those? Probably one guy he might have ran into, right? Because that's the problem here is that it's the same thing with the All Lives Matter movement as well. It's like these people are out to try and validate their own mindset so that they don't need to take a look at themselves. So they don't need to look at their own privilege and maybe have to, to question what they've been raised to think. Instead, they're like, you produce nothing. Well, I seen this one black guy down the street. He wasn't doing anything with his time. They're all that way. That's exactly what they're all yeah. like. It, rather than looking at the case and actually trying to understand uh, it. I just read a story about Robert Smith, who uh, has two and a half billion dollars. So mm -hmm. he, he uh, uh, runs a private equity group, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure he does something. <laughs> his, his, both his parents were principals. He just came out of nowhere. Now has a couple billion dollars. Uh, Barack Obama is the president of the United States. That's a he job. Did something, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I'd be curious to see what study they went to to find out that all black people produce nothing and yeah. contribute nothing. At the Young Turks, we believe in change. We believe we can change the media, make it more independent. Come do it with us. TYTnetwork.com slash join.